Welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida, home to Hankster's Hot Rods, Muscle Car, and Collector Car Showroom. We are not a consignment dealership. We own all of our cars. So when you are dealing with us, you're dealing directly with the seller. There are no third parties. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please be sure to check out our website. It's hanksters.com. This is where you can find all of our most current inventory. If you don't see it on our website anymore, the vehicle is sold. When they are funded in full, they come down. However, our YouTube videos stay up at all times, whether they were shot a year ago or a day ago. Um, they stay up for you guys to view at any given time. The muscle car market right now is extremely hot here in 2020. Um, it's been a good year for Hangster's Hot Rods. Um, and today we are going to present to you one of the most, not only iconic muscle cars, but also the most desirable and sought after at this time. Today we have a 1970 big block 454 LS5 Chevelle. Car does have power steering, does have power brakes. There is no AC on the car. Um, it is a true 56,000 original miles car on the title. Uh, Muncie four speed trans will show you here uh, inside in a little bit and show you underneath in the undercarriage presentation a little bit later on. Um, hood pins, as you see when I put the hood down, car is red in color, black stripes, so it has a great color combination going for it. The SS badging in the front grille, front bumper, excellent condition. Um, the paint on the car, probably on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say, um, is probably an 8. Um, there's no blistering, there's no cracking, uh, there's no fading, spider webbing. Um, there are a few imperfections on the hood. Um, you can see them at certain angles and certain light. They're just little tiny bubbles. You probably won't be able to see them in the camera. Um, like right here, again, you probably won't be able to see them in our shot or in our... Um, in our videos and our still photos, but they they are there. Um, functioning cowl hood, cowl induction, uh, BFG radials, uh, the correct SS wheels, dual chrome mirrors on either side, window glass on the car all the way around is in outstanding condition. Door fitment on the driver's side is absolutely perfect. Really good fitment down the side. We'll show you that as we walk around the car here. Uh, factory bench seat. Uh, black carpeting, and it is not faded, cracked, ripped, nothing. Um, seat belts, not only in the front, but in the rear as well. OEM. They're not the cheapies that somebody just sticks in there just to say there's seat belts in there. Uh, you have a, like, I don't know, rubber floor mat in here in the front and the back. And as you can see, the carpeting underneath is in outstanding condition. Uh, dome lights functioning. Headliner appears to be newer or it's just in fantastic shape, either or. Four-speed shifter on the floor. Um, dash is in great shape. <clears throat> the uh, instrument cluster there, um, all the bezels around the uh, different gauges look to be in good condition. We'll take a closer look at that on the test drive, but really good looking car inside and outside. This is uh, one that I can assure you will not last. The last 70 Chevelle, we had the YouTube video up for about 15 minutes and the car sold. We, the car never even made our website. Um, <clears throat> looking down again, the driver's side of the car, you can see the door fitment to the front and rear quarters is absolutely perfect. Um, same thing with the deck lid fitting to the uh, driver's side and passenger side rear fenders. Bumper on the car is in great shape. Rear bumper, uh, chrome. You can see the, your dual exhaust there sticking out underneath the uh, rear valance there. Uh, Hangster's hot rods plate. SS badging in the uh, actual rear bumper. <clears throat> Take a look in the trunk. You have a full-size spare. Let's see. I don't know if there's a... Um, does not appear. No. Does not appear. That, well, let's check. I was going to say, I don't think there's a jack... Yeah, there's no jack. So no jack, but you have a spare. Trunk mat. Trunk's nice and solid underneath. No rust or rod holes. As with the rest of the car, we'll show you underneath here in just a little bit. 
Um, door fitment down the passenger side, the door does stick out a tad at the bottom. If it's something we can adjust without splitting the paint, we will do so. Um, but if not, it is what it is. It's an old car. Um, the door opens and closes like it should. Just gapped out a little bit here at the bottom. Again, we'll <clears throat> usually I send it to my body guy. He's really good at that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you the hood fitments off a little bit too. Um, we'll try to adjust both of those. If we can't, we can't. It's not the end of the world. If the car runs and performs and does everything that it should, that's what uh, the important part is. Um, passenger side armrest in good shape. Door panel in good shape. Again, seats, dash, glove compartment. It's just a really, really clean car inside and out. And 454 four-speed. So really a lot of things going for this car. Red. Um, so I was telling you guys about the hood fitment. If you look here down the passenger side, you know, the hood gap, it's a little, little bit wider on the driver's side than it is on the passenger side, but not by much. You know, sometimes with these large hoods, you know, they just have a tendency to want to wobble and, uh, you know, the springs, you got to be careful with the hood pins and so on and so forth. But really good looking car. The only paint issue that I can see is just a couple spots in the hood that are very, very minimal, to be fair with you. Um, again, it's you got to be looking at it a certain light from three feet away. You won't even see it. But when you get up on the car and really start digging into it you'll uh, you'll definitely see it like i said earlier we own this car um, along with every car that we have in our building so um, i assure you this will not last 1970 chevelles right now i don't know what it is with the car but it's just like they just they don't hang around long at all so do not hesitate if you're looking for a chevelle because this won't be around very long so let's take it out on the rack and put it up in the air and check out what the underside of this car looks like Underneath our 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle, big block 454 car. This is an exciting car to present, and it's going to be an exciting car to sell, because when I do, I know that somebody will be getting a good car. Front disc brakes on the car. Um, take a look at the oil pan as best you can, you know, with such a big motor shoved up there, you know, next to the starter, you got the cross member. But really nice and dry, really well done underneath, um, you know. No, no oil seepage whatsoever at this time. Uh, you have uh, dual headers coming down to a dual exhaust. Flowmaster looks newer to me. Um, floor pans in the car look fantastic. You can see over here where it might have been patched at one time. <clears throat> this looks like somebody smeared some, you know, uh, sealer over there. But they're nice and solid. The whole car is nice and solid. Like I said, it's originally 56,000 miles. Now, I did not, you know, I'm going to show you guys this. See on the tail shaft there, the tail shaft seal is dripping ever so slightly. You know, this is what I talk about when I'm underneath cars and I tell you that, you know, these things are going to have a tendency to leak. That is not a leak. That's just a seepage. You know, you're going to have that out of the tail shaft seal. You're going to get that occasionally out of the oil pan. You're going to get that occasionally out of the transmission pan. It's just the nature of the beast when you're dealing with these old cars. This car's been parked in our showroom for the last three days. It's not leaving anything in the floor, so that's not a leak. It's just, and, and if you drive the car, that'll, you know, take care of itself. It won't even leak, but when they sit, they dry out, they have a tendency to develop, develop small little leaks or seepage, which that, that's what that is. Um, E-brake, hooked up, intact, functioning, just like it should. Uh, drive shaft, frame rails, uh, lower on the rockers, all three of those look good. Again, as I stated, Flowmaster exhaust, mufflers, pipes, um, drum brakes on the rear. You're looking at the back of the BFG tires. I'm pretty sure this thing had a 12 volt. Yeah, 12 volt rear. Drop downs on the rear quarters look good. You have a set of dual um, exhaust tips out the back there that look real nice. Gas tank looks newer. Really, really good looking car. Um, what we have on this car is what we present to you in this video. I don't know when the car was painted. I don't know if it's the original color on the car. You can check the cowl tag. Um, I don't know uh, when the motor might have been rebuilt, when the transmission might have been rebuilt. Um, I can tell you that there's 56,000 miles on the car and on the title, and that the car's um, nice and solid underneath. Um, and mechanically, performance-wise, it's, it's 
tip top shape. I mean, this is a really high quality Chevelle. Somebody's going to get a real nice car here. Again, we own this car. Don't just take my word for it. Come on down to Daytona Beach, Florida. We are right in the heart of it all. You have the Speedway five miles in one direction, the beach five miles in another direction, plenty of shopping, outdoor restaurants, places to go, things to do, things to rent. You got go-karts, jet skis, uh, slingshots, you know, you name it, it's pretty much here to do. A very uh, popular tourist destination, obviously, here in Central Florida. We offer financing on these cars. The collector car lenders will go up to 10 years with approved credit on this car because this car is going to be uh, over 50K. So it will qualify for a 10 year term on a tier one approval. You're going to have to put 10% down of the purchase price and then the remaining balance over uh, five, seven, eight, 10 years, whatever you get approved for. It has to do with your credit score, debt to income ratio, things of that nature. No prepayment penalty if you want to take it out for 10 years and you decide to pay it off in two. You aren't going to get dinged a prepayment penalty. So before we take this car out on a test drive, I'm going to lower the lift down a little bit, show you guys a little lower on the vehicle, and then we're going to go out and we're going to do the test drive. So when you're buying a classic car like this 70 Chevelle, um, people, you'll hear the term thrown around, you know, how straight is the car? I will get asked, is the car straight? And the answer to your question is yes, this car is. Um, but what they're referring to by saying, you know, is the car straight is basically looking down the sides of the car. Are the doors wavy? Are the front and rear quarters wavy? Does the door fit to the front and rear fenders? And this car is pretty, uh, it's a pretty straight car. So looking at our problem areas, okay, behind the front wheel on the driver's side, nice there, no paint blisters, no bubbles. Bottom of the quarters are as close to perfect as you can get. I'm sorry, the bottoms, the rockers as close to perfect as you can get. Same thing with the bottom of the door. Um, in front of the rear tire there, see no blistering, no cracking. Taking a look at the bottom of the doors, look at how nice the weather stripping is. The door's not rusted. Um, there's no rot down here low in the bottom of the door. Door sills look to be in good shape there. Fisher body uh, plate there. Again, the driver's side door fits probably just about as perfect you can get. Um, behind the driver's side rear wheel there, rear tire in fantastic shape. Looking underneath the bumper, paint's nice. Nice and red there. Shooting down the passenger side, I told you guys earlier in the presentation that there's door gap here, right there. About the size of my pinky. Um, we're going to try to get that rectified, but we are a classic car showroom. Um, we aren't in the restoration business, so, um, you know, we'll try to play with the hinges a little bit, see if we can put the door in, you know, kind of, usually what this is, is you address the, uh, the striker there in or out or up or down, and you kind of uh, loosen the front hinges and try to, try to play with it and get it a little better. We might be able to get a little better, but I doubt it's going to be perfect. Um, looking at the bottom of the door. You know, it's nice shape. The weather stripping appears to be newer. Um, you know, there's some wax on there, but there's no uh, rust again. Bottom of the doors here, no rust. Uh, door sills in here. Nice, nice shape. Look at the rocker. Rocker doesn't have any uh, chipping, blistering, cracking, bubbles, nothing. Behind the uh, driver's, I'm sorry, passenger side, front wheel, front tire there. Great looking car so far, right? So let's uh, take it out on the road and turn some heads. Red 1970 four speed 454 Chevelle. Let's take it out and have some fun. Inside our red 70 Chevelle 454. Um, we bought this car knowing that it needed, uh, we buy cars about anywhere from 85 to 90% done and we just kind of finish them up. And these are one of those cars we kind of have to finish up. Um, we bought it knowing the wipers don't work. Uh, the motor's functioning, the wipers are there. Uh, we need to order a wiper switch, which we did. Um, it should be here in a day or two. Um, the amp gauge is working all the way to my left. Uh, the RPMs are not, we knew that as well. So we're gonna get those working. Um, the clock doesn't work, we knew that. And the clock won't work because we don't mess with clocks and we don't mess with radios. 
which appears to me to be the original AM FM radio. Um, it does not function and we don't do radios either. Uh, temp gauge is working. Uh, fuel gauge is not. Uh, we have about probably a, ha a little under half a tank right now and it's not registering. Um, so we did order the parts to rectify that problem as well. And the turn signals are not working either. Um, well, they're working on the outside of the car, but the indicator lights are not working. It does in the driver's side intermittently. Um, it doesn't in the passenger side at all. You can hear it clicking, um, but it doesn't work. So when we address the tachometer and the wipers, and we're going to address all the gauges and make sure those are all tip-top shaped there. Um, oh, no horn either. So uh, that will most likely, uh, this feels to me and looks to me to be the original wheel on the car. Uh, so we'll probably end up putting a horn button underneath the uh, dash unless we can somehow manage to make it work through the steering wheel but i don't think that's going to be the case but mechanically the car is fantastic and i already showed you paint wise the car is pretty uh pretty flawless couple imperfections but all in all uh, pretty nice uh, driver quality chevelle so without further ado let's take it out and show you guys how it runs driving down the road in our 70s chevelle car has great pickup. Speedometer is working, not bouncing all around. Response in the steering wheel is good. Car moves from side to side, good. Good brakes. Um, let go of the wheel. No hands. It's not pulling from one side to the other. Real nice, smooth ride. Uh, no vibrations in the drivetrain. Um, in the steering wheel and the seat. Not only a good looking car, but also a good running car. Coming up on a traffic light up here, we're going to uh, put the brakes on and we'll run it through the gears here for you a little bit, show you how it runs out. Here we go, ready? Good. If I can get it in fucking first gear. Nope. Here we go. That's 75 and a 45. I'm going to turn it off there. Nice pickup on the motor. Nice shifting through the gears. Car runs fantastic. Strong running car. Good looking car. 454 1970 Chevelle. I stated this in the video earlier. This car will not last long. I will assure you that. So, today on our website, we're going to put up at least 80 photos of the car, probably more. And we're also going to Put up this video presentation we're doing for you right now. 386-944-9219 is our contact phone number here in Daytona Beach. Hangsters.com is our website. Again, to uh, just to repeat myself, we offer full uh, shipping at full retail price anywhere in the lower 48 United States. And we also offer a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, powertrain warranty. It's good at any ASC certified facility in the United States. Covers engine, transmission, and rear end, internal components. So basically, it's all your major mechanical breakdowns. It's not going to cover, um, you know, starters, alternators, batteries, tires, things like that. Uh, but it's going to cover your major mechanical breakdowns. You're going to have $100 out of pocket. The warranty company is going to pick up the remainder on a covered repair. Um, the price of the car is negotiable. Had a little bit of road here to have some fun with. Except for this derelict. Anyways, as I was saying, um, the price of the cars are negotiable. But if we negotiate the price of the car, then we also negotiate uh, the cost of the warranty and the price of the shipping. And you will pay the... We can certainly arrange the shipping for you. Uh, but you're going to pay the driver... Uh, when the driver shows up with the car on a negotiated price. And if you have your own shipping company that you're uh, used to using or familiar with, you know, we're okay with that as well. 
Uh, we don't make any money off the shipping. We just provide it as a convenience to uh, our customers. So check us out, hangsters.com. We would love to earn your business, add you to the uh, growing list of customers we have, not only through the, throughout the uh, country here, but throughout the world.